welcome back in our last lecture I introduced you about the scanning probe microscopy and today we will begin with uh, one of scanning probe microscopic technique called scanning tunneling microscope and we will go first to see what the different components of the uh, scanning tunneling microscope just briefly I will tell about the principle and then the different parts of STM and uh, in this lecture today. Uh, scanning tunneling microscope as the word suggests scanning means a physical probe is there which will scan over the surface providing us the information at the atomic level or microscopic level that is why we are telling it microscopy. We get in images of the uh, object at the microscopic level and the middle one is a, a new word that is tunneling. Here tunneling word stands for measuring the tunneling current. Tunneling current is measured between the current the current flows from the sample or specimen to the tip or tip to the sample a current that flows via tunneling mechanism is called tunneling current and by measuring that tunneling current as you see the principle of the STM is to mop the sharp tip close to the surface in order to measure the tunneling current. Tunneling current can mop to the sample or out of the sample and that is done by applying a bias voltage by applying a bias voltage. And in this cases as we are going to measure tunneling current the tip has to be conducting therefore we use a metal tip as a prop and also sample must be conducting, sample has to be conducting. So, this is the primary requirement for scanning tunneling microscope or in order to measure the tunneling current and using the tunneling current to create the three dimensional image. And the tunneling current depends on the position of the tip above the specimen where it is positioned and how close it is positioned to the specimen and also to the applied bias voltage and also local density of states with the density of states at that place of uh, in the specimen is high or low. So, the current depends on all these factors and this microscope pro provides at the resolution better than 0.1 nanometer laterally and depth resolution 0 0.01 nanometer. So, as you see here we have uh, a metallic tip and a conducting sample this is this is the must for scanning tunneling microscope. In previous uh, microscopic technique let us say scanning electron microscopic technique we, we are using uh, electron beam and if the sample is metallic then is no problem if the sample is insulating also we can do if we do a metal coating on this specimen. If a, if a metal coating is provided then charging does, does not happen we can get surface morphology. In the helium ion microscope also we can do non-conducting or insulating sample much better than scanning electron microscope without doing the metal cutting here in the helium ion microscope there we were using a electron flood gun uh, to, to neutralize the charges at the, in the helium ion microscope and able to study the insulating sample. But here scanning tunneling microscope sample has to be conducted we cannot do metal coating here to study the surface properties of this specimen. Why? Because here we see the surface atoms. If we, we do the metal coating on, on our sample, then actually we will see that metal coating rather than our or the actual uh, material we want to study. So, we have tip, we have specimen and a bias voltage and then a, uh, other things like feedback controller or other components we will discuss what are present in the specimen, uh, uh, spe uh, what are present in the scanning tunneling microscopic technique. Here is a schematic diagram of uh, scanning tunneling microscope. We have, we have a tip here, we have a tip here and tip is mounted on a piezoelectric tube, piezoelectric tube or piezoelectric scanner, tip is mounted on a piezoelectric scanner. And then these are two things, then we have distant control 
and scanning unit distance control and scanning unit will make this tip to go up and down control the gap between the tip and specimen and also to scan over the specimen and in the process we measure we measure the tunneling current because tunneling current is very small we we have uh, amplifier to amplify the measured current and that to be converted to voltage and we measure the data out of it and then data is used to create three dimensional image so we have distant control scanning unit and the data processing unit computer to create image another important requirement for this microscope is vibration isolation system because here the tip and specimen distance or gap is less than 1 nanometer very small therefore any vibration any small vibration is not accepted it should be completely vibration free then only we will able to get the precise and accurate data of the specimen surface so we will go to discuss on each components of a scanning tunneling microscope and how they play a role in the performance of the microscope. First is the probe or tip. The tip are usually made from tungsten metal or, or platinum iridium alloy even it is uh, only single platinum also used or PT, PT is also used PT metal platinum all platinum iridium alloy at the very end of the tip there should be only one atom. So, if, if the measurement has to be done on the ambient condition or under air or liquid then this we should need platinum tip or platinum irid iridium tip. On the other hand because we cannot use tungsten if we have to do measurements in the liquid medium or in the open atmosphere because tungsten will oxidize the surface of the tungsten tip has chances to get oxidized once it get oxidized it become insulating uh, or less or poor conducting as we measure here tunneling current which is not accepted uh, for the tip uh, to be non conducting in nature. For the measurement in high vacuum for the measurement in high vacuum we can use tungsten metal as a tip but not when we will study the material surface uh, properties under air or liquid medium. Scanning tip is most important aspect of this STM as tunneling current is carried by single atom and atomically resolved images are obtained is obtained atomically resolved image is obtained only when tip have a single protruding atom for that than all other atoms which we have been telling repeatedly for this uh, type of measurement. Then the after tip we have a piezoelectric scanner, piezoelectric scanner on which tip is attached or mounted. So, this is a piezoelectric tube scanner. So, here is a piezoelectric material, this is a piezoelectric tube and this is a metal electrode, piezoelectric materials are mostly insulating material, ceramic material and therefore, uh, this piezoelectric material undergoes contraction and expansion. The contraction expansion of piezoelectric tube occur when electric volta voltage is applied due to piezoelectric effect. We will come to uh, more detail about piezoelectric uh, effect soon. So, the contraction expansion of the piezoelectric tube occurs that makes the tip to go away from the specimen or also move in the x y direction. So, the tube piezoelectric tube scanner makes the tip to move in x y z direction. By adjusting the voltage on the piezoelectric elements the distance between tip and surface I R is controlled and it has 4 quadrant like x minus x plus y plus and behind that y minus and they can move together or independently if they move together then motion occurs in the z direction if they move in a single way then they can move independently either in x direction or y direction. So, this piezoelectric a piezoelectric material is used uh, 
as a scanner in this scanning tunneling microscope. Then we have a distance control and scanning uh, unit. First, we have a course control. First, we have a course control of the tip to position the sample surface before the piezoelectric tube start functioning. We have a first course control is there and then the fine control is done by piezoelectric scanner. We have vibration isolation system then uh, because we deal uh, this deals with atomic resolution where tip moment is in the sub nanometer distance. So, the isolation of all kind of vibration are important. Tip to sample distance must be maintained at a, at, uh, at a distance of 0.1 nanometer to get high atomic resolution. Therefore, the vibration isolation system uh, is highly essential. Due to the high sensitivity of the tunneling current between tip and sample, it is absolutely, absolutely necessary to reduce the inner vibration. Inner vibration means the system vibration or microscopic vibration while isolating the system from external vibration. There can be external vibration, building vibration, noise, electrical uh, uh, lines, all these kind of uh, systems can produce some kind of vibration. It should be, uh, uh, there should be no vibration, so any kind of vibration in addition that the system itself should not have any vibration. Then we have data processing unit or display unit. A computer records the tunneling current between the specimen and tip and controls the voltage to the piezoelectric tube to produce 3D image of the specimen surface. First we will see how that uh, tip is fabricated for uh, an STM scanning tunneling microscope. Normally, uh, for uh, the scanning tunneling microscopy study, the operator or user uh, himself or herself prepare the tip. It is not uh, normally um, uh, commercially purchased, it is not commercially purchased. Uh, a fresh tip has to be fabricated, fabricated to get uh, the information at the atomic level or the correct information. So, and the resolution of the STM depends on how sharp is the tip. It is essential that tip has to be atomically sharp having only single atom at the apex. Because a blunt tip re will reduce the resolution because it can cause electron tunneling to occur on a wider range. If there is two atom, if there is two atom then we will always get current both places. That means our resolution is now not atomic level rather diatomic level. So, we can only and if, if, if I have a single object here, single tip is here and I have a diatomic tip at the, at the apex then my current will be seen as like this because both places both the atoms will detect the current and thereby providing resolution of this much larger size in the diatomic sky. Tip should have smallest radius of curvature, radius of curvature at the end and a narrow diameter to explore, narrow diameter to explore the trenches and pits on the surface. The tip should be stable at a given electric field because we apply the bias here. So, when we make a atomically sharp tip that should also stable with the applied field. There are different ways uh, these tips are produced. One can do mechanical coating, iron beam milling. This kind of coarse method can be used if we want little flat samples to study. On the other hand, uh, if uh, normally and more, uh, more often electrochemical etching is used to produce the sharp tips in the STM. So, most commonly uh, electrochemical etching technique is used to produce tips for or prop for STM. So, how the process of electrochemical etching is done? The electrochemical etching is done in a basic basic medium either, either um, uh, so, uh, sodium hydroxide or potassium hydro uh, hydroxide solution as an electrolyte. 
and we have this is in tungsten we have a tungsten uh, as a cathode uh, as an anode this is anode and we have a cathode cathode can be stainless steel can be copper and we apply a potential upon applying the potential uh, there will be etching the wire will etch at the at the surface of the electrolyte at the meniscus of the solution etching will be occurs and when this etching occurs it will produce uh, this is sodium uh, not sodium this tungsten uh, oxide W of 4 minus it will produce here uh, W of 4 minus anions this is a little heavier and due to convection due to convection the fresh OH ion at the electrolyte and air interface will flow in the downward direction and these heavy anions will come downwards and that will protect the uh, wire at the bottom uh, towards the bottom side and once uh, each thing completed uh, this wire will fall down due to it due to it weight the wire once etching uh, oh, enough etching is done at the interface slowly after some time it will fall down due to its gravity or weight and as soon as as soon as uh, the etching process completed and the bottom parts fall down uh, the voltage applied between the cathode and anode should stop to get a, uh, to get a very sharp tip in the upper part. If the voltage is still applied to, to a few second, then it will make this tip again blunt. So, as soon as uh, etching process continue, uh, as soon as etching process completed and when the bottom part fall down, the voltage should be uh, stopped to get a very sharp tip. And you see in the right side diagram here uh, how atom, uh, how a sharp tip is obtained. Uh, there is also a, another uh, design where uh, a copper copper wire it is a copper wire copper wire is bent copper wire uh, this is a copper wire is bent in a as a form of circular ring and it is used as a cathode cathode then this is our tungsten wire this tungsten wire is normally of uh, diameter uh, 0.25 mm initially a tungsten wire of 0.25 mm diameter is taken and then by applying the potential where the ring served as a cathode and the tungsten wire served as anode and it produce uh, it is done um, the etching is done, electrochemical etching is done to, to obtain a tip or prop for the STM measurements. It is also in the basic solution. So, to create a sufficiently sharp tip, the etching uh, important point is that etching must be stopped as soon as possible as soon as possible once the tip is formed. This is very important if itching continue and this um, uh, application of the potential continue for a little longer time then tip will be get blunt. A typical benchmark for a good STM tip is the radius of curvature around 50 nanometer or less at the tip apex. The sharpness of the tips depend on the operation of the cut off circuit it is very important and how fast it is and limited by the speed of the circuit itself limited by the uh, speed of the circuit itself and the, pro the reaction uh, that follows here uh, like uh, for um, for uh, making a, a tungsten tip cathode we have uh, like a, it is in aqueous solution 6 H 2 O plus 6 electron it will produce 3 H 2 plus gas plus 6 O H minus and at anode which is tungsten it will be provided with O H minus ion which will produce an ion W three four two minus and plus 
H 2 O plus electron it will be power H 2 O 8 H 6 E and overall reaction is like tungsten plus 2 O H minus plus 2 H 2 O is equal to 3 H 2 gas plus double O for 2 minus. This was the overall reactions in the etching process. So, once TIP is formed, it is normally clean with first deionized, deionized water and then there are um, cleaning process. First is uh, it is heated under vacuum and resistive heating is done first. Resistive heating can be performed to remove the oxide layer because it is done in aqueous uh, electrolyte. So, some oxide layer will form at the surface of the tip. So, resistive heating is done uh, to remove to remove the oxide layer uh, and other contaminants from the agent like we are using sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, some sodium or potassium salt might be sticking on the tip. So, the resistive heating will remove that. A direct current is applied between the tip and between the tip and another tungsten wire to touching at the tip and, and it, the tip is heated to a temperature uh, above 800 degree centigrade for several second to clean the surface. There is other uh, process of doing it also like it can be done by sputtering by uh, ion bombardment such as argon ion bombardment of the of the tip under vacuum this also can be done. One can also apply uh, high field a voltage is applied between the tip and the sample tip at the positive voltage and sample at the negative voltage to remove and clean the surface. This is what also we have seen our field ion microscope. Uh, if you apply a higher much higher field then the surface atom will be evaporated evaporated and removed. So, in that process also by applying the high field to a in a control manner we can clean the tip of the uh, uh, tip of the tungsten. And once uh, it is done one can know whether uh, whether it is um, a very sharp tip or not by doing a field emission uh, measurements. Uh, one can uh, one can uh, one can take this tip one can take this tip and then take another tungsten wire then apply a potential apply a potential dip, um, dip, um, potential between them if it is atomically then when these two will come closer let us say this is tungsten one can use another tungsten. So, when these two will come closer to each other then current will pass current will tunnel between them. So, if a because electron will be emitted from the surface of the tip because it is atomically sharp tip uh, a very high field will be concentrated at the tip and it would emit the electrons and if we could measure a uh, measure a current of around 1 nano nano ampere 1 nano uh, ampere at a voltage of let us say at a voltage of at around 600 voltage 600 volt then tip is sharp if we need higher voltage to uh, to uh, to achieve 1 nano nano ampere of current that means the tip is not very sharp or atomically sharp one can do a measurement or testing to make sure that whether atomically sharp tip formed or not. In other way one can look at under microscope uh, and check whether uh, tip is sharp or not. So, in this way uh, the tip is fabricated in uh, for the scanning to landing microscopy. So, in conclusion what we have seen here uh, that uh, we have uh, a prop, sharp prop that is nothing but tip. This tip is either tungsten or platinum or platinum iridium alloy. Tungsten tip is used if our measurement has to be done in vacuum. 
On the other hand, if measurement to be done in ambient condition or under liquid, then we should use platinum or platinum iridium alloy. And these are all metallic tip because one of the requirement of scanning tunneling microscope is that uh, the both sample and tip should be conducting because here we measure the tunneling current. Then we have a piezoelectric scanner. A uh, piezoelectric scanner uh, is nothing but a piezoelectric material which is a ceramic material uh, that undergoes contraction expansion when we apply voltage and that allows the tip to go up and down or left and right x, y or z moment. So, piezoelectric scanner does the moment in a finer manner after the course control is done by the controlling unit and then we measure the tunneling current between the tip and sample. So, therefore, the tip scanner scanning unit that is the piezoelectric scanner and tunneling current measurements all these three play important roles to create surface images, three dimensional images. In particular, the shape of the tip has a pronounced effect on the Im image resolution. So, we must have a atomically sharp tip to get atomically sharp image. The STM tip is most commonly fabricated through electrochemical etching in a basic solution. So, we use electrochemical etching as a very common or widely used method to fabricate the tips for STM. References. Thank you.